Hey, welcome back. So this week what I want to do is test two different tweeter configurations. So this one I've mounted in a baffle. I call it a regular baffle because it's very similar to what you'd see on a on a regular box type speaker. And then I've just chamfered the edges, uh, which is pretty typical uh, for that, for reducing edge diffraction. Um, if you don't know what edge diffraction is, um, basically it's when you listen to the speaker, you're going to hear the direct sound and you're also going to hear the sound that comes off the edges of the baffle. And then those two sounds are going to combine to alter both your frequency response, um, both on axis and uh, off axis as you, as the, you get sound coming off the speaker, um, say on like a 30 degree angle, it's going to hit your sidewalls in your listening room and then it's gonna um, reflect back to you. So when you listen to a speaker, you're actually hearing um, the direct sound and also the reflected sound from your early reflections in your room. And so those those two uh, sounds are combined psychoacoustically. You, you actually hear it as one sound, but what you're actually hearing is the summation of both the direct sound and the early reflected sound of the speaker. So it's important, it affects the overall balance of the frequency response, the, the timber, you could say, of the speaker. So um, what I wanted to do um, was do a, what I call this a, a tweeter pod. So I got this idea from some of the smaller uh, horns that I've been making. So here, this is a Jean-Michael Leclerc uh, horn, and so these sound excellent. Um, the off-axis response is, is great. So my thinking here was that by mounting just a regular tweeter into a similar uh, shape, then I could also um, dramatically reduce edge diffraction and see what kind of off-axis performance I can get. Like I said earlier, the overall response of your speaker is both the direct sound and the reflected sound off the, uh, off the bezel or off the edge of your speaker. Um, also the tweeter, I should mention as well, the tweeter has an off-axis response as well, but it's um, made up of both the direct sound of the tweeter and the edge diffraction. And I can show that. What I want to do is do acoustical measurements um, showing a colored polar map. And it's a great way of actually being, being able to visually um, identify where there's anomalies in the off-axis response because really you want a smooth off-axis response just it's just as important as an on-axis response because that's the overall sound of the speaker is the the combination of the two so um, what I've done here is I've, I've designed that in SolidWorks so I'm going to zoom in on this as well and just show you the idea behind this so I'm going to section the part so that you can see uh, more clearly what I've done. So here the blue is the tweeter and so you can see here the this particular tweeter which is the the Viva XT25 SC90 has a dished bezel so you can see what I've done is I've transitioned completely smooth uh, off the bezel and then I've created basically um, a curved, basically it's similar to the Jean-Michael Leclerc horn profile. This is a what's called an exponential spiral curve and then I've just terminated it with a smooth transition back. So then it's just a flat back similar to what I've done with my other horns. You probably would benefit by having you know a curved kind of an egg shape on the back which I can do maybe in another video. But for now we're just going to test these two and see what the results are. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly show you uh, my test setup. So I have my Dayton Audio mic and then I'm measuring the distance of six inches and also I've created this uh, rotary table here that has the um, angles and I'm going to do five degree increments so I can rotate the tweeter here as I do my measurements and so I've just kept it so that as I rotate the uh, distance is, is kept the same from the microphone. Okay, so I've just created a PowerPoint that will walk you through the test results. And so I've called this the uh, pod versus baffle shootout. So just to cover off what I'm actually doing here, I'm using a software program called Arta. And so I'm going to do a, a colored directivity map. 
and the frequency range will be from 1 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz and I'm measuring from on axis to off axis uh, plus or minus 45 degrees and my mic distance is 6 inches okay so here's the regular baffle and you can see here if you've never seen a colored polar map basically it's got frequency across the bottom and then the off axis frequency response starting down the middle is the uh, normalized response and then so for example you can see here at 10 degrees off axis the red if you look over here um, it's the, the light blue is is 0 dB and then if it starts to turn hot it's going to be an increase of uh, well two and a half three dB and then the blue is actually um, where the sound drops so for example if you look at 10 degrees off axis at around three and a half uh, kilohertz you actually get a rise um, we'll say red it's a 3 dB rise at only 10 degrees off axis and then it, the trend continues um, so your overall um, cumulative response for your room or how the overall speakers are going to sound is that there's going to actually be um, a strong presence in the three and a half K even though it measures flat on axis this is showing that there's some uh, significant anomalies off axis and so we're, next we're going to show the uh, colored polar response of the tweeter pod so you can see here um, we have some definite improvements so we're, we see a uh, gradual narrowing of the response past 10 kilohertz which is which is pretty normal however we're seeing a lot more consistent um, basically what this is showing um, one th there's a lot of orange off axis and then it turns to red um, but basically we're only seeing about a 1 dB increase off axis from 1k to 10k um, so we're seeing really good um, coverage so we're, we're it's a stable off-axis response so the next thing we're gonna look at is the actual frequency response on axis so here's the frequency response of the tweeter pod and it's relatively flat um, through its bandwidth and next I'm gonna show the regular baffle and here the results aren't so favorable we're seeing a, a massive dip um, at around three and a half K um, which I think is maybe why we're seeing an increase off axis so um, again not not really that great so these are the results um, listening impressions is that the tweeter pod definitely sounds better you're gonna get a cleaner sound edge diffraction actually uh, will cause a blurring of transients and detail in your sound so um, this is showing um, definitely superior results Hey, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any other suggestions or you want me to do a different type of test, uh, please leave a comment. If you like my videos, please click subscribe and see you next week.